Raichu is one of the most neglected and mistreated Pokemon as far as Generation 1 goes. In Red and Blue, Pikachu, it was just another Pokemon. It wasn't anything special. But things quickly changed when Pokemania took off. It became the star of the anime, and the only Raichu that we even see there is Lieutenant Surge's, and that episode pretty much served as a way to tell the audience that you just don't need to evolve to be stronger, and Pikachu went on to defeat its evolved counterpart. Now from there, Pikachu got its own Generation 1 game, it got its own unique held item starting in Generation 2, and that just continued on. It has had countless special variants in the years to come, and Pikachu and the Pokemon brand have become so intertwined with each other that it's now the mascot for the entire franchise, and even someone who didn't know anything about Pokemon would recognize Pikachu. Today we'll be taking a look at Raichu in a solo run of Pokemon Yellow, which is almost ironic considering that it's Pikachu's game, and we'll get into the details as to why I chose this over Red and Blue later, but if you want to support the channel, likes and comments help out the most, so if you are a new viewer or a returning subscriber like Brandon M, just scroll down and type in Rodent Reject, and it'll just help out a lot. And with that said, sit back, relax, grab yourself a Sodi Pop, and let's just get into the action. Now if you just squinted your eyes and looked at Raichu's stats and you remember the Pikachu solo run that wasn't too bad that I did, you'd say this might be okay. We have 90 attack, 90 special, and 100 speed which would give us roughly a 20% chance to crit. Those are really solid stats, but the problem my friends is when you look over at that learn set. We have Thundershock, it's the low tier electric move, it's not great but it's pretty decent to start with, and then you have Growl and Thunder Wave. And that's it. You don't learn anything else because you're a stone evolution Pokemon. Astute observers might be sitting here thinking, how are you gonna how are you gonna beat Brock? Electric types can affect ground. And that's the problem here today. We're gonna have to use struggle. Now it's not gonna be quite as bad as Abra to where you only had teleport and you had to use struggle even just to grind, because Thundershock will be sufficient enough to pretty much beat every single trainer along the way and actually be pretty strong considering our base stats. Now we get to work immediately. Immediately, we start taking on every single trainer that we can besides the light years junior trainer because you'd have to go into struggle strats for that and it just takes a little bit too long. So by the time you finish up all the trainers and you finish up the final bug catcher, you'll be level 12 and I guess we need to talk about the version differences and why we're doing yellow version today. And it's mainly because of the Brock split. Now Raichu will have some really tough late game fights in yellow version, but the Brock split in my opinion just outweighs that. Cause you might be thinking, Matt, Scott's told us that yellow is so much harder and every Pokemon Red video he shows, he makes it seem like it's the easiest thing in the world. Well, just sit back, listen, and maybe you learn a thing or two here. Brock's Pokemon have two levels lower than his red and blue counterpart. And the main thing here is that Geodude does not have defense curl. After testing and running some numbers and all that kind of stuff in both versions, level 18 can get you past Brock in the yellow version fairly consistently. It's over a 50% chance. That might not sound like it's great, but that's pretty good considering the time investment. So level 18 here, you have no chance of uncontrollable variables like defense curl, and it's fairly consistent. Really the only thing that knocks that number so far down is the fact that Onyx has a higher chance to use Bide, and if it uses Bide, then it's pretty much game over, so you really can't control that. That's the main thing. So in red and blue, what makes it so bad that I'm changing versions? Well, we've already mentioned it. His Pokemon are two levels higher and defense curl. This means that when you get on struggle strats, if you get unlucky and Geodude starts ramping up those defense curls, the battle starts to take longer and longer. And if he goes into tackles, there's just a lot of variables. You cannot do that fight at level 18 there. And even if you try it at level 20, it's still pretty inconsistent. The only thing that I could really do to alleviate the red and blue Brock fight was to get to level 23. And even then it's not overly great. We've already mentioned the levels, we've mentioned the defense curl, and something that's kind of under the radar here is that red and blue version has a higher chance to use bide because the yellow version has an extra move in bind. By the way, I'm saying B-I-D-E bide and B-I-N-D bind. I hate saying both of those words, but he has B-I-N-D bind in the yellow version, meaning that he has an extra move, therefore a lesser chance to use bide overall. 
all of these things add up to make a more consistent experience in yellow version and you save a lot of time because we know that trainer battles give you much more experience they are much more efficient and if you had to grind out five extra levels on wild pokemon to beat the red and blue version you'd be wasting a ton of time now factor in that there's far less trainers in the red and blue version than there is in the yellow version you'd have even more time on your hands just battling weedles and caterpies or whatever you find something else that you also have to keep in mind is that the Viridian Forest spawn pool in yellow has much better Pokemon that can spawn. For example, you can get like a Pidgeotto, you can get level 8 Pidgeys, and overall there's just a chance to get higher experience while you're grinding. And I will just say that I don't think it's as black and white as yellow version is harder than red and blue version or anything like that. Like I don't mean to trash talk one version over the other because if you've noticed on the channel I've been playing a lot of yellow version. I do enjoy it a lot. I just think that there's like this stigma about it and I do think that red and blue are much harder for the first half of the game and I think yellow is harder in the later half of the game. I've explained my reasoning on a couple of other runs and I really don't think there's much more for me to say about it. And the last thing that I will say is that you have to plan this run out pretty precise. Now right here I am one battle away from hitting level 18 and remember that you have to use struggle on Brock so I am not experienced away from level 18 and that means that I have to go into a battle, find a Metapod, and I have to get rid of all of my extra PP. Now the problem here, and something that you really just don't think about when you're planning these kind of runs, is that Thunder Wave has 20 PP, Growl has 40. So we have to waste 60 turns on this Metapod so we can get down into struggle strats. And the smart thing here, and what I did in practice, is I saved one single Growl for the Geodude and it helped out a lot, and I forgot to do it here, and I thought it was going to cause me a lot of problems. But with all that said, all that babbling, I think we can finally just take a look at Brock. Now trust the process guys, yellow version will be Raichu's best run. Overall, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. We can only use Struggle. We are just pretty much auto battling here. The Geodude has no other moves other than Tackle and Yellow version. And we're just going until we win. We finish this one off in the green health still. We're really not missing that much health. And then on to the Onyx. And like I said earlier, the only thing that's really bad here is if you get Bide. Now you can get a Bide later in the fight and you can just finish it off real quick. Or maybe you could take one early in the fight. But here we get pretty lucky considering this is our first attempt. We don't really see any bides today, and on the first attempt, 100% success rate, level 18, Raichu is able to get past Brock in a sub hour in game time. That's pretty nice. It was at this time that I realized I didn't have my reset counter put up, so I quickly fixed that. And we've already went over Raichu's pretty solid base stats, and we've talked about Thundershock being a pretty good move, and it's not really going to have much that's going to resist it coming up, but we do need to think about those future grounds tops coming up in later parts of the game. There's not many, but there are a few battles that will be an issue. But anyway, we can skip over this next part because we are over leveled and very strong. The only thing to note inside of Mount Moon is we do get access to Mega Punch. It's not a great move, but it does give us another damaging move and a way where we can actually hurt ground type Pokemon, which is pretty helpful, at least in a couple of spots. Upon arriving in Cerulean, the first thing to do as an electric type is to go ahead and take on Misty. We have pretty decent base special and we are faster than the star me So that means that we can really quickly get past this one All right So something that I should have brought up a long time ago at the start of the video is that I have fixed my overlay to include a Moves effective power in under the move slot up there So stab and top effectiveness is now included Thundershock if you look on the side is a base 40 power move when you add it to an electric type It becomes 60 effective power that is represented at the top top right there and when we go into the rival number two fight and the sparrow comes out it's going to double to 120 effective power because it is super effective and it gets stabbed against this sparrow this was something that i worked really hard on it's one of those things that i rushed through my december work so that i can get back into the the software side of things and figure a few things out and this is one of the big accomplishments that i did over the december month overall with this many levels and mega punch giving us an extra move we get to 
do this one fairly easy. There's not much to say about it and we can just continue on from there. But if you like looking at the power changes and knowing just exactly how strong a move is, that is now available to us and I like it a lot. As for Nugget Bridge, there's not really much to say here, but I do think it's worth showing the hiker that's guarding the elixir up here. Now the Machop itself, who cares? Thundershock will take it out very quickly. But the Geodude, this is where you would need Mega Punch. You could take on this or the Onyx Trainer. I, I decided that getting the elixir is more helpful, but you can see that we can two-shot it. It's not too bad. And moving on from there, we can talk about Seismic Toss. Now to get to Seismic Toss, you do have to battle this one hiker that has about 52 Geodudes, and then you can make the next trainer walk up, and then you can go behind him and get it after that battle. But Seismic Toss is the answer for ground types in this run. We do get access to Body Slam, that's pretty good, but the resisted damage just really doesn't do a whole lot, and Seismic Toss will be the move that gets us past pretty much the toughest battles in the game. That's how we're going to deal with our biggest weakness. Seismic Toss, not a move you normally see pop up a whole lot, but for Raichu, it's pretty much a run saver. You would rather it have something else, but for what it is, Seismic Toss does the job just fine. From there, we can skip it all the way down to the SSN, and there we get Body Slam. I don't need to talk about Body Slam. Very strong. It's just an upgraded Mega Punch. Does so much more, so much better. That's really good. We also get the Rare Candy guarded by the Gentleman, and from there, we can just skip over Rival Number 3. Let's go straight to Lieutenant Surge, and we have a Raichu off today. His Raichu is one level higher, but the IVs and Static Experience make a pretty huge difference, and you can see that I outspeed it. It does get an X defend, but at that point, we already know it's Lieutenant Surge. I will say that it's weird that Pokemon Yellow has this sprite, but we still use the Pokemon Red back sprite for Yellow version, and it's clearly not the same color at all, but it's Lieutenant Surge. This fight doesn't matter. What matters is after the battle, we get Thunderbolt, and this is a very, very strong Thunderbolt. Not quite as strong as Zapdos' Thunderbolt, but this is one of the strongest stab electric moves that we'll see in any run. As far as Rock Tunnel goes, the only thing to note is the Hiker with the two Geodudes and the Graveler, the self-destructing Hiker. He is infamous, and this is where Seismic Toss comes in key. We can two-shot each of his Pokemon at this level. We are in that range. And the important thing to note is that he doesn't actually have any ground moves right now, so he doesn't have anything super effective against us, and we have such a comfortable level advantage that they would have to get pretty lucky. Probably all of them would have to use self-destruct to win this fight and here it doesn't really happen and we just get past it but this is just a good showcase of how seismic toss helps write you out in its worst matchups and we can just keep it moving all the way to celadon now the first order of business here is to go ahead and enter the rocket hideout and i do fight giovanni here he's pretty much the same as the hiker a little bit easier because he does have a persian that can be hit by thunderbolt at the end seismic toss while it does take an extra turn on the right horn there's really not much of an issue here here, and we do pick up the high money items in preparation for our one big Celadon Mart buy later. When that's done with, I head over to the Pokemon Tower. We make quick work of rival number four, and we finish up that. There's no need to show all the Gastly's and little weak stuff here. We can just skip over it. After that, I do walk down and I pick up Swift. We don't really use Swift a whole lot in my channel and my runs, but Swift was like a contingency plan. It was a just-in-case plan. I had a strategy where it could be useful, so I grabbed it just in case things didn't go my way and I had to go this route, but we'll talk about Swift much later in the video. Down in the Safari Zone, I pick up some high money items and I finish up the HMs for the run. And now it's time for our one big Celadon Mart buy. I grab a Poke Doll so that we can use Mimic later. And for this run, I'll be buying just two calciums and five proteins with all of our money that we have saved up so far. Just like the Zapdos run, you wouldn't think that proteins would be the way to go, but it does help you hit these very important damage ranges in a couple of spots later in the game, so that's why we're doing it here. We already got really high special. We need to make our attack just a little bit more. Pack that just that little extra punch, you know what I mean, guys? When we're done with that, we head down to Erica's gym, and I am picking up about four extra battles here. Now, we talked earlier we talked about how you'd have to get up to level 23 in Pokemon Red and Blue. Now, the trade-off in Pokemon Yellow is that you will have to battle extra trainers and you'll have to be a higher level later, but I do think that battling trainers now, once you have your best moves like Thunderbolt already in place or like Body Slam compared to just Thundershock and grinding wild Pokemon over battling trainers, I think this is overall faster. We battle four trainers here and then we could take a look at Erica. And I wouldn't say that this battle is the prettiest one that there 
is. It's a little bit sloppy. My Thunderbolt is resisted, so I have to use Body Slam. And while I do make it through on the first try, I lose a ton of health. I get paralyzed. But a badge is a badge. A win is a win. We can move on. Now it's time for Silphco. And Silphco in Pokemon Yellow is something that you often want to do before that. And there's several reasons for that. Rival number five doesn't even have an Alakazam, for example. And the main thing here is that Koga has a pretty significant level bump to his Pokemon and we'll just take our chances in here first. Now just like with Erica's Gym there are a lot of extra battles mainly the scientists in here there's a lot of easy experience to be had and we're gonna need some extra levels going towards the end game so I do pick all these up but it's not really worth showing in the video because they're just easy battles. Overall there are 13 extra battles I pick up here it takes about 20 minutes of in game time to go through which really isn't too bad and now we can take a look at rival number five. He leads with Sand Slash. It's another ground type Pokemon, another wrinkle in Pokemon Yellow that we'll have to deal with later. But for here, he's in a range for at least a three shot with Body Slam. Now I get lucky, I get a crit here, but it really doesn't matter because it still takes a couple more turns to knock it out. Now luckily it doesn't have any ground type moves just yet, but it does crit on a slash and it does a swift. So we're at about half health before moving on to the Ninetales. In any matchup where Thunderbolt is at least neutral damage, it's gonna be our go-to move. It is very powerful you can see that 142 effective power up there and while it's not enough to one shot it it does just go for a roar on its turn and we're able to take it out after and then cloister comes in it's weak to thunderbolt it doesn't have very good special anyway so we can just move on just like that once again kadabra is next and with all of our extra levels i do outspeed it and we have the attack to just go ahead and obliterate it with a single body slam and now we can move on to the end towards jolteon it is an electric versus electric top matchup it is pretty much going to have to go for double kick or a move like that and here it just misses and we have that nice beefy neutral body slam damage with all those proteins we got earlier to make pretty quick work of it and to overall in the battle pretty clean now going forward we can just skip past giovanni number two we've already seen how the ground types are going to work i don't have any resets and instead let's pick back up down in fuchsia where i do pick up a couple of extra battles once again just two there's a couple of extra jugglers that have pretty frail psychic types and we can pick them off very quickly and now it's time to face Koga and the main reason I held off on this fight till after Silphco was that this level 46 range right here and eventually leveling up to 47 after the first Venonat will give Thunderbolt a really sizable chance to one shot all of these Venonats eliminating the chance to put toxic on us and any other annoying little thing that Koga might want to do so we take them all out in a single hit and now it's time for Venomoth and here Thunderbolt doesn't look like it's enough to two shot the Venomoth but it doesn't go for double team it just goes straight psychic and I'm able to pretty much take it out with ease since I'm at full health and there's not really any danger of being knocked out myself so that's another badge down Koga really not too bad once you plan it out back in Saffron I do make my way over to pick up Mimic and from there we do what only the most desperate of runs do and that's go into the fighting dojo it's really quick experience and I decided to do it now since I'm about to do Sabrina anyway it's very quick very painless there's no resets here you don't need to see it all you know what it is i'm just knocking out mankeys and machops as for sabrina obviously this is the optimized run that you're watching and this level 48 range right here makes sure that not only the abra is a guaranteed one shot but also the kadabra that means that i pretty much avoid any chance of flash or kinesis accuracy drops and by the time i make it to the alakazam i hit it really hard sabrina goes for an x defend just throws the battle i guess and a second body slam takes the badge this one's very quick now we can take a nice brisk swim down to Cinnabar and usually we don't do anything extra but like I said Raichu needs a lot of help for some late game battles so today we will be doing some extra battles in Blaine's gym something that's very annoying about yellow version that only exists it's exclusive to yellow version uh, fire red leaf green let's go Pikachu let's go Eevee they don't have this you have to answer the question you cannot just talk to the trainers to fight them and there's a few trainers in here that are specifically very high value there's two trainers that have a nine tails on their team and there's a solo Rapidash trainer later in. We take them out, and after a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. We can finally take a look at Blaine. And this one is a bit of a heartbreaker. It's a lot of bad luck. On the Nine Tails, it knows Confuse Ray. And even though I do some pretty decent damage to it, and it's kind of looking like I have this in the bag, I get confused and I go on to hurt myself like 
an absorbent amount of time, like an annoying, unlucky amount of times. And by the time I take it out, I'm at five HP. And since I can't one shot the Rapidash, I get taken out. And usually when you do these kind of runs, like you always want to have the perfect run. You love zero reset runs. That means that a run is fully optimized. And I thought I had mastered Raichu today, but here we get unlucky. We have one reset right here. And on the second attempt, Things just go just as planned. I take a tail whip from the nine tails, two hits take it out, and after that, I pretty much take a, a little bit of damage from the Arcanine, but not a lot, and I easily cruise through the battle. The dichotomy of the first failure and this one is just, that's just how Blaine is in Pokemon Yellow. He's kind of annoying, he's not really hard, it's just, you never know what you're gonna get. And now, my friends, this is pretty much where all that extra training that we were doing pretty much comes into play. There are a few trainers inside of Giovanni's gym that don't have ground type that I want to take out because they're very quick and I do that there's about four total and after that we can talk about what I think is the hardest challenge for Raichu in the entire run yellow Giovanni is no joke and it's no exception here now let's talk about what needed to happen and we can talk about swift for a second too so going through the practice runs and then going over the damage ranges what I wanted to do for my final run was keep body slam and I would just go into Giovanni and I would see if body slam could get it done and if body slam fell short and I was missing too much I would go with Swift and I could still make it through the fight pretty comfortably now I do learn mimic before this fight and I do use rare candies to get me all the way up to level 58 for that nice damage rounding threshold and now we can just kind of talk about the dreaded Giovanni experience in Pokemon Yellow First up is Doug Trio, and Dig will hurt, but the main thing here, level 58 allows you to do in all those proteins, it means that Body Slam is a guaranteed one shot and we outspeed, so we can just get rid of it and move on in the fight. Now originally I wanted to take Earthquake somewhere in this fight, but the strategy here is double team. You want to mimic double team. The TM for double team is banned, but you can mimic it. You've probably seen Scott's thoughts do this plenty of times, even in my Ghastly stream I did this on Pokemon Yellow. But the problem is that Persian has double team and if it uses it too much you might have trouble getting through the rest of the fight so this is where swift and body slam come into play i wanted to try out body slam here after i used a few double teams and if i could get past with body slam i'd keep it if not i would switch over to swift the magic number for double teams here is three so i want to set up three and then it doesn't really do anything against me so i just go for a thunderbolt after i'm set up and i'm able to take it out and i think the hardest battle might be already over with since i was able to set up very cleanly at full help. Nidal Queen comes in. I do have three double teams set up, but Giovanni decides this is a good time for a guard spec by Silphco, and I'm able to take it out with two shots from a body slam, and as for the Nidal King, it simply can't hit me through the double teams, and two body slams takes it out as well. Now the huge problem is that massive Rhydon with its huge attack. If it hits me, it's game over. But we have three double teams set up. And I am able to get off the required four seismic tosses to take it out. And ultimately take this battle. And make it look pretty easy in the process. So that's Giovanni down. And I know when you watch the optimized runs, it looks like these runs are very clean. But you gotta remember how much behind the scenes footage there are of practice runs, running damage calculations, seeing what level you would need to get a certain range. And for me personally, it's very satisfying when it all comes together like this. Now, if it wasn't for bad luck on Blaine, we'd be at zero resets right now, but it is what it is, one reset, not too bad. Now we can just quickly look at rival number six. First up is Sandslash, and just like last time, it doesn't have a ground move just yet, and that means that this is significantly easier than it will be later. And we take it out, we do take a pretty nice little chunk of damage, but now Next up is Execute. We cannot one shot it with Body Slam. It goes for a Poison Powder and thankfully it just misses and we're able to move on to the Nine Tails. And you already know, we can kind of skip ahead a little bit because Thunderbolt will take out anything that it does neutral damage to and we are faster than everything at this point. So let's just zoom ahead to the end of the fight. And at this point, when it comes to the Electric Mirror matches here, it's going to be going for the much inferior Pin Missile while I have carefully sculpted my attack with Proteins and I have Body Slam. So I just do a lot more damage on top of just being superior in every single stat so it's a very easy and clean win all you gotta do is worry about that sand slash coming up later now as for victory road it's very rare that we do any training here but believe it or not Raichu still needs a little bit of health and 
these are pretty much the highest level trainers outside of the elite four that you can face there are several that are really good we're not going to show them all but even like this first trainer that has fully evolved starters there's a chancy trainer there's a trainer that has a blast toys they're all very nice experience for very easy battles and we do polish off some levels before we're ready to take a look at the elite four now i don't use any rare candies here because i do need the maximum amount of levels that i can get for that champion fight and now we can just kind of take a look at lorelei And here there's not much more to say. I do make a blunder. I make this fight a lot tougher than it should be. Thunderbolt obviously does super effective damage to everything but the Jinx. And here I just want to spam my way with Thunderbolt through the fight. Now the smart and more consistent play is to mimic Amnesia. And I don't do that here. And I almost get taken out. I get put to sleep by the Jinx. And it gets really close when I make it to the Lapras. But at the end of the day, I do finish it off. And it's Lorelei, water type against an electric type. We could just move on to everybody's favorite, Bruno. And as far as that goes, I don't really care. It's going to take two seismic tosses for the two onyxes. I don't bother trying to mimic anything. I don't get fancy here. I just go straight seismic toss, thunderbolt all the fighters. Everything's pretty much a one shot outside of the onyxes. It's Bruno. It's very quick. There's nothing more to say. Next up is Agatha, and I don't really have a great answer, but through extra levels and careful planning, let's see how this one turns out. First up is the Gengar, and it doesn't have hypnosis in yellow version. I think that this first Gengar can compared to the red and blue version is significantly worse in my opinion. Since the Haunter and the final Gengar do have Hypnosis, the plan here is to mimic Substitute from the first one, set it up, and two Thunderbolts will take it out, and that'll pretty much set you up for the rest of the fight. Golbat is weak to Thunderbolt, and everything else is pretty easy considering they can't do a lot of damage to you, and since you have Substitute up, they can't put you to sleep. And utilizing that strategy makes a fight that doesn't really look too good on paper be actually pretty easy, and we could just end this battle and move on to the next one. Next up is Lance and you already know how it goes with Gyarados. If you have electric move at all you can just sprinkle it on him and he's gonna die a horrible death. But the thing about yellow version compared to red and blue is that the second Dragonair has Ice Beam so even if you're playing a Pokemon that doesn't really have great coverage for Lance you can just hold off, make it to that second Dragonair, use Mimic on Ice Beam and then just one shot the rest of his team. I do take a critical hit Hyper Beam here. It does significant damage but I am able to survive on some very nice HP right here and from there the damage is already done I have ice beam I can just sweep to the rest of the fight and just like that Lance is done with when that's over I do have five rare candies left and I use them all to get up to level 70 that's a very key number for this fight it puts us at a lot of break points that help out a lot and outside of that I do have the TM for reflect I don't think I mentioned I picked that up way back in Celadon but I did we learned reflect over seismic toss and now let's talk about what might be the hardest battle in the game because this one took the most planning you're not really gonna see it here but this one was a huge headache and we needed to be a very high level to consistently get through this one so let's just take a look at the champion fight First up is Sandslash, and finally, after all this time, it has a ground move. This is why I set up Reflect. I still take pretty heavy damage, but it's not as bad as it could be. And here, you kind of need a crit to comfortably make it past this. And I didn't really plan for that, but it just kind of happens here. It's worth noting that I could have barely survived another Earthquake, but you really don't want to. So taking it out quicker than I anticipated really bodes well for the rest of the fight. Next up is Alakazam, and if you're not level 70, this one becomes a lot harder harder to take down. The breakpoints really help here. Now what happens during the actual run is I want to take recover because I've already taken a lot of damage. I heal myself a little bit, but the main thing and the thing that's a detriment to the rest of this fight is I take not one but two Kinesis and my accuracy is lowered two stages and that makes things kind of problematic when we finally take it out. The Executor's not too bad. I miss once. I do get leech seated, but I am able to connect on two body slams. I take it out without too much issue and we're not really seeing the effects of Kinesis just yet, and that's pretty good. Cloyster is up next, and this is where we start feeling that Kinesis. I miss multiple times. Leech Seed is ticking up. We take some damage. We're down to just 49 health, very close to the red. I finally connect on a Thunderbolt, and we're able to move on to the Ninetales. And when it comes to the Ninetales, immediately I heal up, and I do actually hit a Thunderbolt, and I almost take it out in one hit, but I just miss. And from there, I start missing. It starts going for Confuse Ray. I heard hurt myself a ton but thankfully we picked up recover and this part of the battle takes about two minutes on its own 
little bit more than two minutes. It's a huge slog, but eventually I am able to finally connect with the Thunderbolt. I'm at good health and we can finally move on to the end of the fight. As far as Jolteon goes, it's pretty much the same. I miss a ton and it's really good that I have recovery here because I get really low. I'm able to top myself off and eventually after another slog, I am able to take it out and we finally finish the run. And that's it. Raichu has done it. It completed the run at not a great time, but it is what it is after such a slow start and having to use struggle on Brock. We didn't really expect much from this run, but it was pretty smooth. And the fact that we finished with a single reset, it's not that bad. At the end of the day, Raichu finishes the run at level 71, one single reset, and a final end game time of 4 hours, 1 minute, and 10 seconds. And this would put Raichu down in the C tier, just below Executor. To only have one reset is pretty impressive but that's about the only impressive thing of this run the last thing that i'll talk about is when you're looking at red and blue versus yellow you might say red and blue might have a faster time but you gotta think of how much longer it would take to get to that brock split if you didn't have the extra trainers to battle and you had to battle five levels worth of extra wild pokemon with those wild pokemon being lower level than they would be in yellow so i do think the brock split would be closer to like an hour and 45 minutes to two hours so you would lose an hour just on that split alone and i think this is about the best that Ratchet you can do. And as always, special thanks to my members. We got Deal, TR2G Hipster, Meeves, JWJ, Mutus Dozen, Dees Master, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Ferment, and Kendall C. I appreciate the support as always, and if you made it this far, consider subscribing to be kept up to date with Pokemon Solo Runs. That's about all I have for you guys today, and I guess I'll see you on the next video. Bye!